Hello, Dread Mechanic here, and today I would like to show you how to build another vanilla plant machine. Behind me, you can see that I've been working on a front-end loader, otherwise known as a bucket loader. And today I will also show you how to build the arm and the buckets using vanilla controls. So as you can see, we've got four wheels, we've got a bucket arm, we have a control seat, we have a action relay for sending signals, and we have a whole bunch of event controllers and thrusters tucked away inside. So you can drive forwards and backwards. It has handbrake and parking controls. And much like the forklift, if we hit number six on our toolbar, we can operate the bucket arm. So we can use the jump or spacebar button to raise it up. We can use the crouch or C button to bring it back down and we can use the forward and backward or W and S controls to tip the bucket back and forth so much like the forklift we'll start with six batteries in the middle and then we can have a pair of forwards and reverse thrusters and then we can have a pair of up and down thrusters. And then we can have another set of event controllers. And then because we need the wheelbase to be slightly longer than the forklift, we can add a few beam blocks. And for the start of our counterbalance at the back, we can add a whole bunch of heavy armor blocks. And then we can have a pair of two by two wheels at the front and then we can have a pair of three by three wheels at the back and for this design we need our seating position slightly raised so we'll add in a few more beam blocks and then we can stick a control seat on top of them then we can add a pair of rotors in front of the control seat and we will adjust them to 10 centimeters because it's going to make the next bit a little bit easier then we can add a 2x2 two two slope base onto each of those rotors and some half blocks and some half triangles then we can add a few more rotors to the end of these arms and then we can add some of the new cylindrical column blocks and we can also set these rotors to 10 centimeters as well then we can add a pair of merge blocks to merge that into one grid and to start building our bucket from we can add a few more beam block end pieces then we can add some half blocks and then we can add some 2x1 slope tips to the top and bottom and then we can add some more and then we can add even more of them and then we can use the beam block 2x1 tips to make the teeth at the top of it and then we can add some of the 2x1 tip armour plates to the side. And then we can add some regular armour panels. And some half panels. And then some of the 2x1 slope plates. And then we can add some of the half 2x1 base plates. And then we can build a row of mag plates across the middle. And for a bit of extra visibility, we can add a camera to the top of the bucket. And now we can build some more of the counterweight at the back. So we'll have six full armor blocks. And some of the armor sloped corner bases. Then we can have some more full blocks down here. And we can sneak an antenna into the back. 
And then we can have some more of these sloped corner bases and some of the sloped corner tips. Then we can fill that gap in and add some more of the 2x1 tips. We can take those blocks out and replace them with the 2x1 bases. And then a pair of sloped corners. And then either side of the wheel arch we can have some of the new sloped transition blocks. And then we can have some of the transition tips. And just for a bit of style, we can have some of the cylindrical columns with some exhaust pipes on top of them. And then we can have a pair of reactors for a bit of extra power. And then we can add some more half armor blocks. And then we can add some of the 2x1 slope tip armor plates. And then we can have another pair of the heavy armor slope transition bases. Another 2x1 tip piece. Then we can have one of the inverted corner tips. And a few more half blocks. With the half slope at the end. Then we can have another 2x1 slope tip armor plate there. And one of the centered panels. And then we can have another one of the centered panels at the front. And a few more of the slope tips. And then we can have a few more regular panels in there. And another one under there. And then for a bit of extra counterweight, we can add another heavy armor panel under there. And we can add two of the half panels. And then we can tuck a beam block in there. Then again, for the front wheel arch, we can use the slope transition bases. And for the front, we can just add one of the 2x1 slope tips. And then for our cab, at the back, we can use some of the half armor panels. And then we can use some of the 2x1 tips. And then some more half armor panels. And then we can have a few more of the 2x1 tips. Then we can go back to the half armor panels. And then we can add one of the half slope armor blocks. And a few more in the middle. And then at the back we can add another one of the quarter panels. And a few more of the half panels. And then we can add a few more 2x1 tips in the back for a little bit of extra support. And it can also act as a mounting point for our rear window. Then we can add a few more of them to the top. And we can add a couple of the 2x1 slope windows to the front. And then for some more counterweight, we can add some of the 2x1 bases. And some of the half slope blocks. And then we can have a pair of the half triangle blocks. And then a little group of the transition slope blocks. And then we can add a couple of work lights to the front. We can have another camera at the back. We can have a signal relay at the side. And then we can have some of the 2x1 tip half armor plates. Another set of half armor plates. Some of the 2x1 tips. And some of the small grid barred windows. And then we can add a whole bunch more heavy armor plates to the bottom. And then for a bit of extra security on the front of the bucket, we can add a few half armor panels. And we can also add a little bit more armor paneling to the sides of the arms. And then a few more half panels and quarter panels around the sides of the rotors. So, now that that's all built, it's time to get programming. So the next thing we can do is cut it down. And we can start sorting it out. 
Now to start with, that strength isn't very good, so we'll set that to 25. Now that back wheel is a little too high, so we will set that to minus 15. Now when it comes to the arm limits, because we're using two sets of double rotors, the easiest way to set all of this up to begin with is to either set one side of the rotors to zero torque or just turn them off. Because otherwise we'll have two rotors trying to fight against each other and it makes it very difficult to sort out limits. And that way we can just use one side to figure out where our limits are and once we've done that we can turn this side back on and set up the appropriate limits to match. And with this arm design, I think we go with about, probably about 80 degrees as our top limit. And then probably about 10 degrees as our lower limit. And that's still a little bit too low. So let's adjust the bucket a little bit. And if we make the lower limit minus 10, that 10 degrees plus the 80 degrees on the other set of rotors should add up to 90 and give us a completely vertical arm. So we raise that arm back up again. So there we go, we have a nice flat arm in its vertical position. And then if we tip the bucket forwards, Yeah, I think we'll go with 120 degrees. And now that we have these angles figured out on the left-hand side, we can copy them over and do them the opposite way around on the other side. And now that we have the rotor limits sorted out, I have gone ahead and named everything appropriately. And we can now starts to set up our vanilla controls. And so if we select one of our arm rotors, we can just double check which way goes in which direction. So positive velocity moves it up, negative velocity moves it down. So we will start with the first of our event controllers, which we have named controller arm up. And much like the forklift, it will be set to the thrust percentage event. We'll select equal to or greater than and 10% and we will select our control thruster up. Then we can select our first arm rotor and we will choose set velocity and we will select five RPM. And in the other slot, we can quite simply just select reset velocity. And for the other side of our arm, because the rotor is the opposite way around, we will use the opposite velocity. So this one will be minus five. And then once again, we will select Reset Velocity. So now if we hit the Up button, it makes the arm move up. And then next we'll go to our controller arm down. And again, select the Thrust, select Equal to or Greater Than, select 10%, and select our Down Thruster. And then we'll select the same two rotors that we did before and we will just set it up the opposite way around as the up controller. So the first one can be minus five and reset velocity. And then the second one can be positive five and reset velocity. So now when we hit the down button and the up button, we can move the first section of the arm up and down. And then we can do the same thing with our second set of rotors. We can check what velocity moves the bucket in what direction. So positive tips it forward and negative pulls it back. So then we can move to our forward and reverse controllers. We'll start with the forward one. And once again, it is thrust percentage equal to or greater than 10% and our forward thruster as the control block. Then we can select our second set of rotors and the left hand side we will select 5 rpm 
and the reset velocity. And for the right hand side, we will select minus 5 RPM and reset velocity. And finally, for the reverse controller, we do the exact same thing one more time. Thrust percentage equal to or greater than 10% and our reverse thruster. And once again, the settings for this will be the opposite way around to the one we set up previously. So it'll be minus five and reset velocity and then positive five and reset velocity. So now when we hit the forward and backwards buttons, we can tip the bucket. And when we hit the up and down buttons, we can move the arm. And for some more of our suspension settings, we can take the steering off the front two wheels and we can set them all to the same speed limit of 20 kilometers an hour. And we can adjust the power settings as we need. I've gone with 30% for this because we don't need to go too quickly. And we can do the same thing as we did with the forklift and we can set up a group for our control thrusters. And that way we can turn the control thrusters on and off so that they do not interfere with our driving settings. And now we have what looks like a functioning bucket loader, it's time to do a little bit of testing. And in order to test it out, I have set up a couple of dispensers to deposit ore and components into our bucket. So we'll drive forwards. We will apply our handbrake and turn on our controls. We'll lift our arm right up into the air. Then we can switch to our bucket camera, turn off our controls and our brake again, drive forward until we are just in front of it. Put our handbrake back on. We have a look at that, it's fairly well lined up. And then we can activate our action relay, which is set up to trigger the action relays on these two dispensers. So we'll hit number one. And there we go, we've got some ore. And now we can drive away. And then we can drive over to the little skip that I've built. Apply our parking brake, turn on our controls, and then we can tip our bucket all the way forwards. And then we can do the same thing with our component dispenser. So if we drive over, apply our brake, activate our controls, lift the bucket arm straight into the air, and select our camera and then we can line ourselves up with the bottom of the dispenser and then we can select relay number two And then once again, we can drive over to our skip. Apply our brakes and activate our controls. And then we can tip the bucket forwards. And there you go, that is how I build a vanilla bucket loader. So thank you for watching and goodbye for now.